Let's get some analysis and bring in Trita Parsi, founder and former president of the National Iranian American Council, author of Losing an Enemy, Obama, Iran and the Triumph of Diplomacy, and a single roll of the dice, Obama's diplomacy with Iran. Thank you for, for <clears throat> excuse me, thank you for being with us. I'd like to hear your you, take on this move by Iran this Wednesday, speaking with its neighbors. Well, the dialogue that is now starting to take place between the Iranians and the Saudis and the Emiratis in particular has actually gone on for a couple of months, uh, hosted and facilitated and to some extent even mediated by the Iraqis. The big change is not that the Iranians are doing it, it's that the Saudis and the Emiratis finally have agreed to engage in direct dialogue with the Iranians, which they had refused to do for several years. And the reason why there is that change in mind in Riyadh and in, in Abu Dhabi is primarily because of the fact that the United States is leaving the Middle East militarily, which means that these countries do not have the protection that they had assumed they had from the United States. And under those circumstances, continuing the conflict with Iran without, at, at a minimum, trying to resolve it or reduce tensions or temper tensions through dialogue is too risky. It can lead to something even bigger. It can actually ultimately lead to a much broader understanding between these two countries, which is a would be a fantastic and very welcome development. But we're quite a far bit away from that. And as you point out, the, the Sunni-Shia divide within Islam, of course, one of the main obstacles uh, to be surpassed in all of this. C can I uh, talk a little bit about the language that Iran's president used uh, in, in, in his in his speech to the UN, uh, talking about uh, the sanctions slapped on Iran by the Trump administration as an act of war. Uh, that kind of hard language, of course, is playing to a, a certain public back home, I imagine. But isn't, it pushing, isn't he really pushing himself into a corner regarding negotiations? He's looking for a maximum victory scenario. That's hardly likely to be possible, is it? Uh, the language of treating the sanctions as an act of terrorism or act of war is not necessarily new. Of course, anything that Raisi says on the international stage is going to get a lot of attention now because he is the new Iranian president. And his speech overall was quite negative and ag aggressive uh, towards some of the geopolitical changes that are taking place. A lot of gloating of how the United States has um, uh, weakened itself through these many different wars that it has engaged in. But when it comes to the actual position in the negotiations, the problem is that it's not still clear what the Iranian position is, because from the side of the P4 plus one, there's been emphasis from the Russians, from the Europeans, from the US, even though the US is still outside of the deal, that whatever the negotiations led to prior to the Iranian uh, elections, it should be picked up exactly from where it was left off, meaning not reopening those many different issues that had been discussed in the last three months before the elections. The Iranians have not yet made clear as to whether they accept that premise or if they want to open up some of those issues that already have been agreed upon. Uh, would the decision by Iran to press on and enrich uh, more uranium in increase that aspect uh, of the whole equation? Does that make it even more difficult to get back to a position of agreement, say, that was had at 2015? It certainly is not helpful. And the Iranians are going to continue to do that as long as the United States continues to have the sanctions that Trump reimposed on Iran, plus many more sanctions uh, in place, which still have are in place eight months into Biden's presidency. Neither one of those escalatory moves, whether those are active or passive, does not matter. Neither of them are in any way, shape or form uh, helpful. And the fear in Washington is that at some point, it's not exactly clear when that point is, but at some point, the non-proliferation value of this deal may no longer be as positive as it once was in 2015. I personally think we're far away from that. But nevertheless, it, it is risky and dangerous to play for time in the manner that we're seeing happening right now. Trudeau Parsi, founder and former president of the National Iranian American Council. Thank you, sir, very much indeed for your analysis uh, you. here on France 24. We appreciate it. Thank you.